As a Wesleyan uh, theologian, I have a particular interest in reading Henry Nouwen through a Wesleyan lens. Uh, Henry Nouwen uh, through a Wesleyan lens. Why, why Henry Nouwen and why Wesley? When I was in seminary, uh, I was a member of the Church of the Nazarene, uh, and I went to Yale Divinity School. And there at Yale, I, I was the only evangelical, certainly Nazarene student, that I could find. And I found myself particularly lost in an in a environment that had a kind of a smorgasbord of theologies that you could choose from. And the professor that took me under his wings was a Roman Catholic priest by the name of Henry Nouwen. And knowing that I was Nazarene, evangelical, he kind of put his arm around me and said, uh, you're welcome here. Come to Mass, come to meditation, be who you are, uh, explore the, the different roots and branches of the, of the Christian tree, and I'm here for you. And so I, I just sort of felt in my years in seminary a, a conversion of heart uh, to embrace a more contemplative form of Christianity. And I began not just learning from Henry in class, but reading Henry Nouwen. And, you know, he's author of over 40 books on the spiritual life. Not too long ago, Christian Century did a survey of what books pastors read in preparing their sermons. Who do they quote from in their sermons? And they surveyed uh, Roman Catholic priests, uh, Protestant pastors, and evangelical ministers. And they found that on their list of reads, good reads, and who are quoted in their sermons, there were two authors that made all three lists. I mean, obviously, Catholics had their own uh, writers, Protestant, mainline, and evangelicals, but Henry Nouwen and C.S. Lewis both appeared on all three lists. So Henry Nouwen is one of the most quoted writers in the 20th and now 21st century in churches. And so here's a, this is a booklet on reading Nouwen through a Wesleyan lens. And I think when we do that, we see that there are certain parallels and particularities. And I think it's worth um, pointing those out. In terms of um, parallels, Henry Nouwen and John Wesley were both theologians of the heart. Now this is so refreshing because Christianity is a religion of the heart for Wesleyans. And John Wesley, of course, with the famous quadrilateral, we, we, we filter all that we do see and think about the Christian life and, and life in general through our, uh, you know, through the quadrilateral of, of tradition, of scripture, of reasoning, and of our experience of the heart and the experience of faith. It's an emotional, heartfelt religion. When we think of um, orthodoxy or ortho, um, we think of orthodoxy or ortho, ortho practice, we also have to go to what we call orthocardia, what's a good and right heart. And Henry Nouwen had the same view of the spiritual life, that spirituality is a spirituality of, of the heart. How is your heart strangely warmed when you belong to God, when you're in relationship with God? And, and, and Nouwen develops an entire theology around the condition of a person's heart. His book, Spiritual Direction, for example, is about the formation of a heart, a heart that's right with God and right with each other and right with the world. In Spiritual Direction, Henry Nouwen teaches how to start spiritual direction groups. Now remember, this is a Roman Catholic priest who's caught on in the main line and Catholic and in some evangelical churches who starts these, these covenant groups, if you will, these spiritual direction groups on how to form a, a spiritual heart in community with accountability, bearing one another's burdens as scripture uh, requires. And of course, John Wesley and the Wesleyan movement and the early Methodists are the legacy we have from them is, is, is bands of men and women, of class meetings, of society meetings. And so Christian formation in the Wesleyan tradition also is about formation of the heart within community, within small groups of accountability and support where we bear one another's burdens and confess our faults one to another. So there's a parallel there. So in spiritual direction, we have a theology of the heart, we have a structure of accountability and support, and we have a way of being in um, uh, 
mentoring, being discipled by other Christians who John Wesley says, John Wesley would call this spiritual counsel. Henry Nouwen would call it spiritual direction. Whatever we call it, we are in community with each other, we are in accountability, and we have mentoring and discipleship relationships so that spiritual direction can happen our entire life long. Direction is not just a Roman Catholic uh, tradition of a supervisor uh, discipling a, a mentee or a person under their charge. It's not just a formal relationship between a priest and a, and a new, uh, a newly ordained priest. Spiritual direction is a Protestant and evangelical tradition of discipleship and, and community. Mm -hmm.